Good morning, YouTube. I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing my book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. What a crazy morning. <laughs> I woke up to a text from my neighbor who said that the electricity and internet had been off since six in the morning. I am not aware of any storms that happened in our area. But she was right. No, and she said, she wrote, oh, I'm dying. I need coffee and I'm freezing. Now, this is an elderly lady. So I said, give me 10 minutes to put makeup on and brush my hair and my teeth and uh, come on over and I'll brew us a pot of coffee. And I've got uh, some electric hand warmers. And uh, she did not wait 10 minutes. <laughs> she came right over and um, I pulled out one of my power supplies and turned on the faux fireplace under my TV and plugged in her electric hand warmers and put on a pot of coffee and uh, pulled out the toaster and made a bagel and cream cheese. And that was how I spent my morning. And I, when she left, I gave her a very small unit because her cell phone was dead. And I gave her a very small one and, and uh, she took it home and electricity got turned on about two or three hours after that. And, um, and she goes, where can I get one of these? And I was like, just keep it. I've got, I've got 20 of them. Just, just keep it. I'll bring over the box and the rest of the stuff. She's, she's low income and she's elderly and I would rather give it to someone who I know is going to use it and appreciate it than try and sell it on Facebook marketplace. Cause the things just aren't selling right now. Now I've had the heater on for a while because I woke up and it was 51 degrees in the house. And this is the humidity on top and the temperature on the bottom. So when the electricity came back on, I immediately turned on my normal heater and the heater. And it's all the way up, all the way up to 63 degrees right now. So it is good to be prepared. Hey, it brings people together when you've got a generator. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. All right. So as you all know, I sell things on Facebook Marketplace. When I do product reviews for solar generators and they let me keep them, I have so many that I generally keep the largest one that has the most amount of wattage and battery capacity. And then I sell the ones and that's my personal keeper, which right now is the Dabson. And um, then I sell the extras along with the e-bikes. So um, I've been selling my e-bikes and of course... Um, all of the cheap ones have been sold. So anything that was in the 900 to $1,000 range is sold. The rest of the ones that I have left are like, they're, they're $2,600 e-bikes that I'm selling for 1500. And of course nobody's buying. They want, they're throwing in offers for $200 and it's just like, that's ridiculous, but it is what it is. So I'm just going to wait till spring, see what happens. And if anything, if they don't sell, I'm just going to keep them because I'll use them. I will use them. I don't need to use them because I've got 10, something like that. And um, I don't know if you're paying attention. I, I put this on cinematic so you guys, it, so it's fuzzy in the background on purpose because it looks like a tornado came through my house because the bathroom is getting renovated. So my uh, contractor left all of his tools and stuff because it's the weekend as I'm filming this. So so all of his stuff's just spread around, spread out all over the house, <laughs> including drywall, plumbing parts, all that stuff. And I went five days with no bath or shower. And when it's winter time, okay, so I don't know why I'm telling you guys this, but it's winter time, okay? I am, during the summer, I'm a shower person. During the winter, I'm a bath person. And I get the water so hot that it makes my skin red. And and it takes time to get in the tub because it's so hot. And then the steam. And then I leave the water in the tub and I open the bathroom door and it brings heat in the house. And it's just, um, I, I love to soak in the winter. And the bathtub that I had before was a whopping 53 inches long and 18 inches wide. Now, for those of you who have a standard bathtub, oh, and it was like six inches deep. I swear it's like an RV tub. So 
for those of you who have a standard bathtub, they're usually 60 inches by 30 inches and about 12 to 14 inches tall. So, and mine was a sitting tub. So the second you lay back, it's just straight. So here's your back trying to lean up against it and it's so uncomfortable. And it made the bathroom tiny. It did. The way that the bathroom was set up. So I had to call uh, my contractor, who's also my friend, and we had to move around plumbing. And um, anyway, after five days, finally get the tub installed. And oh my God, it is the perfect bathtub. Now, I'm not affiliated with them, and this is not a sponsored video, but it's a Maui cast from Home Depot. It's a 60 by 32, so I got it extra wide. And it's like extra deep. It's 14 inches deep. And the plumbing, the plumbing is still just like a, a pipe sticking out of my wall, but I get hot and cold water, so it works. And I finally got part of the wall. I have, I have enough of a wall. It was just insulation. So for the last few days, I've been able to take a bath. And oh my gosh, you don't know what you're missing until you don't have it. Like I've been here a year and I, my baths have been like annoying. Like I don't even like taking a bath because I, I can't, like even, even if you, I can, there's not even enough, I can't even turn my body. It's so, it's only 18 inches wide and that includes the outside rim. So it's probably like 14 inches. I can barely, I'm not even that over, I mean, I don't even think I'm overweight, but I can barely fit in it. I can't turn. It's just, it was an awful experience. And after getting a decent tub, a nice tub, oh, Maui cast, I will recommend them till the cows come home. But uh, after getting a bathtub, it's so nice, you guys. It is so nice. Um, and the bathroom will, oh, and the bathroom will be done in the next week or so. So I will have a video coming out for you on that. While they were doing the bathtub or doing the plumbing under the house, they found old newspapers from February 10th, 1935 during the Great Depression and another one from... March of 1969. The one from the Great Depression, I put them into, uh, I framed them. I, I cut out all the articles I could and I framed them. Now you guys are going to get a kick out of this. There's articles. <clears throat> um, man in New York gets electric chair for bank robbery. There's one in there, and it's local too. Local man gets prison time for stealing bicycle. He's going to prison for three years for stealing a bicycle. And this is back in the day when divorce was unheard of. Like it was a scandal. There are articles about people in this town who were getting divorced. <laughs> So-and-so got divorced claiming uh, great cruelty from his wife. Like that, it's crazy. Um, somebody went to the gallows, the gallows, they, they hung them. So here they were talking about a hanging at San Quentin from, for a guy who was from here. And I was like, what? And it wasn't even like, he didn't murder anyone. He just, he like robbed somebody or something. And you're just like, whoa, that's like excessive, but okay. And this is California. So this, this state used to be red, by the way, until the 60s, I think it was. 50s or 60s, this was a totally red state. Not so much anymore. Now that I've wasted nine minutes talking about nothing, <laughs> I'd like to get to the subject of this video. So as I was stating, I sell on Facebook Marketplace. So I get these notifications and I try not to scroll on Facebook, but sometimes something catches my eye. And there was a survey from people in my town saying, how much do you spend on Christmas per child? I was shocked. 300 to $500 per child is what people spend on their kids on Christmas. Ah, oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Let's say I had two kids. <laughs> That's a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for two kids. Now, wow. So, I know that people want to give their kids everything that they never had. I get that. I get it. But there's a, there's something about like, we didn't have money growing up. I was poor and I have regrets, but I don't, 
like I, I don't know how to put it into words. My brother would want something fancy and expensive and I never wanted anything fancy and expensive, but I wanted to be like my brother. So I'd put something fancy and expensive on my Christmas list that I didn't really want. And my mom would be working a million hours of overtime to get enough money to buy me that expensive thing. I don't know. I wish I never did that. I, I have guilt over that. But there's nothing I can do about it. But do kids do these extravagant, crazy gifts because it's one time a year, because they're really celebrating Christ, or, or are they just spoiled? I don't know. But I do know that I spent maybe 200 bucks on six people this year. And um, let me just say this. Well, one of them, one of them wasn't actually intentional. I spent a hundred dollars on fireworks back by for the Fourth of July, and I had every intention to like light up my neighborhood with all these fireworks. But come to find out, all of my neighbor had the neighbors had their own, so um, I just watched theirs instead because I prefer watching as over to lighting my own and making things go boom. So I just watched theirs. So I had these extra fireworks that cost me $100 back in, for 4th of July, but I wasn't going to use them. So I figured I'd given my brother as a gift because he has four kids and they like boom things. So there you go. But the other 100 was for five people. I got, uh, I got all, you guys saw my gift, my gift video of like inexpensive and cheap gifts. And I, I think that we've gotten to a point where it's just like, why are you spending so much on your kids? Like, no wonder people say it costs like quarter of a million dollars to raise a kid because you guys spoil them rotten. What kind of kids are we, what kind of kids are these kids, what kind of adults are these kids growing up to be when everything is handed to them on a silver platter and everything is super expensive, super expensive. Like we were lucky if we got a sweater when we were kids, from our grandma and grandpa or or a scarf or a pair of shoes or something like that. And I would much rather have the time with my parents rather than the gifts. Now, here here's a weird kind of story. When I I mean first YouTube. I mean, I I've been making videos for like 6 or 7 years, but I've been like on YouTube since like 2006 or something. Way way back then. One of the very first videos I ever watched on YouTube ever was of this family. They lived in the snow. I know that. I remember that. And for Christmas, long time ago, the, the ki- some of the kids are still teenagers, but some most of them are like early 20s and the parents are a little bit older. But uh, they vowed, like, we're not giving gifts this year. Like, or not this year. We're not giving gifts ever again. Our gift is to spend time with each other. But... If you find something lying around your house that you're not using and you think that somebody else in the family could use it, then you can give that as a gift. But we're not spending any money. No money. So this one lady had like a necklace that she gave to her mother-in-law and, you know, it, it wasn't like an expensive, extravagant necklace, but it, in it, she didn't buy it for her. She just had it and she didn't use it and thought she would like it. But what they did was really cool. So Um, each person in the family would have a flag. Like one was American, one was a German flag, one was Swedish, you know, whatever country they were. They did their own family Olympics, basically. But their family Olympics were like, so they were in the snow, like deep snow, deep snow, right? So one of the things they did was they jumped out the second story window into the snow and whoever could make the deepest indentation in the snow won for their country. And like the whole Olympics, like you won brownies, literally brownies, not brownie points. Like you got a plate of brownies if you won the Olympics and they would go out into the snow. They put on these silly suits like these. They weren't swimsuits. They were like, uh, you know, those people who are they're pushing bobsledding with but they have on skates right and they go through that they made a movie about it about these this team from I want to say Africa or Jamaica who like have no snow and they went to win the Olympics cool runnings they made a movie about it but that's the sport I'm talking about and um I had a point and it's gone (laughs) Oh, the suits. So yeah, they had on these spandex suits that like were for their country. And, and I was like, that would be so great. And then I think of these ideas 
And I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do, <laughs> right? I, California, no, well, there's snow, but not where me or my family lives. I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take uh, those round things that you do use for the snow, right? And they always have handles on them because you have to hold on when you're sitting on them going down snow. I'm like, okay, we're going to tie a rope to that. And then each adult is going to tie the rope around their waist. And then we're going to have a kid on the sled on the back. And then we're going to race across the grass in the park. And whoever crosses the finish line first wins. And so I have this great idea. And then I bring this stuff. And then I'm like, let's do this. And they're like, no, we don't want to. Great. <laughs> so so uh, the fun stuff that I like to do that doesn't cost any money is not something that's at all enticing or entertaining to my family. And I just want to spend time with them. I don't want to, they're like, I'd rather open presents. Okay, let's open presents then. And let's just congregate around the, the finger foods and uh, talk about how successful you are at your job, because that's the most interesting thing to talk about. Not creating memories together. <laughs> so I want to do all these cool things like potato sack races and sled sled races and stuff like that. And I want to make family memories, but nobody else is into it. So if you guys have that idea, send me a video of you racing on your sleds with your family or potato sack racing or croquet like that's the stuff I want to do and I would take that any day of the week over opening presents so anyway I told everybody this year um so hold on so I do gifts on Thanksgiving because the kids the four kids are so inundated with presents on Christmas that I don't even see them enjoy their gifts they're young and they'll open a gift throw it aside, open a gift, throw it aside, open a gift, throw it aside. And they've got like 20 gifts each. So my gifts just get thrown aside with all the other 19 out of 20 gifts that they're playing with in that moment. So I do my gifts on Thanksgiving. I did my gifts on Thanksgiving this year. And I, there's four nieces and nephews. Only one said thank you. So, <clears throat> and um, with my other family members, um, I don't think I've got, I've gotten a gift from my brother's girlfriend, but I don't think I've gotten a gift from my brother in over 10, 15 years. So I told them that this year is the last year I'm doing gifts. So maybe next year I'll bake them some brownies and some beef jerky and some Oreo truffles, but that's it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going all out with the gifts anymore. Um, because, I, I don't think, I honestly just don't think that they're appreciated. And that's something unfortunate that I see a lot of my subscribers going through is they're like, my family is so unappreciative, but I keep giving them gifts because, you know, we live in a cultural capital, a, <laughs> a capitalistic culture and consumer society. That's how we live. And it's accepted. And it's kind of like, there's got to be more to it than that, right? This video, the, this channel is mostly about money saving and, and you know, kind of going back to the old ways, but it's also about being happy without spending money. And I find that the people who are all in it together and find different ways of appreciating life without spending money are the ones who are the happiest. And I'm I'm also on a journey or a quest to find my happiness, but it's really, really hard other than you guys in my community. It's really hard to find people that are interested in the same things because we're so brainwashed. Like it's been generations. This is like the second generation, third generation, depending on your age, that it's all about consumption, con consume, 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 consume. And, you know, don't fix it, just buy a new one, that type of thing. And it's, it makes us less resourceful, less um, inventive. It, it just kind of makes things kind of boring. So, and I know that that's not this audience. This audience is like, you guys are my peeps. You guys are like, you guys are like me. You're like, I don't, you know, I don't want to buy gifts. I'd rather just play games and have fun and do fun stuff. But 
outside of the circle. <laughs> I mean, think about it. It let's say let's assume, right? Let's assume <laughs> which is not correct. So there's 300 million people in the United States and I have 300,000 subscribers. That's like less than one one hundredth of 1% of the population is interested in frugal living. You know what I mean? So that, that has to tell you something. That's got to say something. I don't know what I'm babbling about. <laughs> it was a crazy morning. A crazy morning for Prepper Princess. Hi, Blue Jay. Hi, Blue Jay. There's a Blue Jay right there. My orange trees are uh, overloaded. And they're huge. Last year, the oranges were like the size of cuties. They were tiny. They still tasted good, but they were tiny. And this summer, I watered like maybe three times. I watered the trees like three times. A good deep soak. And they're huge. This They're like double the size, giant oranges. And I love oranges, but I know it's all I'm going to be eating for the next two months. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to make it into orange juice and orange popsicles and stuff like that for the summer. And then I'm going to run out of room in my freezer. And then, then I'm going to be eating them all the time, every day with every single meal. Because oranges, there's hundreds of them. I could eat Three oranges a day for the next three months, and I'd still have plenty left over. But they won't last three months, so I have to... A lot of them are going to go to uh, waste. I mean, I'll give them away to whoever wants them. Oh, there's a big bunch of like six of them all together in a cluster, and they're huge. Sorry. Sorry babbling again. I know that this is a long video, but some people like long videos once in a while, which I think is really cool. Just me babbling about nothing of any importance other than people spending too much for Christmas and people not appreciating what they get for Christmas and people not channeling their inner child on Christmas. <laughs> Channel your inner child. Make up some cool, fun Olympic games like that family did. And I will never find that video again because it's probably not even on YouTube anymore. But man, that was like one of the coolest. That's what got me hooked on YouTube back in the day, back in like 2007, <laughs> 15 years ago. <clears throat> um, hello. Puppies are asleep on the couch. Ooh, it's up to 65 now. Humidity, temperature. <laughs> I'm getting much more comfortable. I should make a video because somebody commented in the comment section. I thought this was funny. They said, uh, they said, you don't live at the poverty level. You live in a big fancy house. Okay. So you can't see it. But do you see this, right? Okay, first of all, you see the roof, the ceiling. That has to come down. And, and it's not that I want... Yes, it is beautiful oak wood. I am aware of that. But it is bowing in the middle by several inches, which is the camera does not pick up. I mean, it is bowing. I could, I hit my head on the strings that come down from my fan and they're not long strings and you can't even see it, but I have taken out some of the wood. Where? And what is behind you is a window and above the window, the crown, crown molding. No. The craftsman wood is on the floor right here to be saved for later to put it back up. And the wall is missing. <laughs> There's no wall. Um, and we had to see what was above. I, okay, not we, I, I tore it apart. <laughs> I took the walls off because I needed to see what was above the ceiling. And what is above the ceiling 
I was correct. It was lowered at some point. So above the ceiling is a layer of rollout insulation, then a two by four, then the original ceiling. I went up into the attic and there is no, no problem with the wood in the attic. The wood in the attic is solid and straight. It is not bowing. There's nothing wrong with it. So the bowing is coming from the two by fours that are above this ceiling. And this ceiling, the way that they put it on, the way that they put it on, I can't save it. I can't save the wood. The way that they put it on, you tear down a piece of wood. It They use certain types of nails and they glued it onto the two by four and you can't pull it down without breaking it. I've already broken one just to see what was up on top of the ceiling. And trust me, I kind of wanted to keep the oak ceiling, but I can't. I'm sorry. So we're lifting this ceiling um, to make it, because when you, you can't, again, you can't catch it on camera. It doesn't show well on camera. But when you walk into the house, you immediately feel like ducking down because the ceiling is that low. It's about six inches difference than any other ceiling in the house. Like right there in the entryway, six inches higher. Bathroom, 12 inches higher. Dining area, six inches higher. Bedroom, six inches. Uh, Kitchen, like 12 inches or 18 inches. The kitchen is super tall, but can't deal with it. And it, br- it does bring down the value of the house, which is why I got the house so cheap. It, it needed a lot of stuff, needed a lot of updating. It didn't need repair, it, it was grossly outdated though, and it's still, it's still in the process, but we're just going to, I'm going to get it updated. And by the way, with the bathroom, I have done almost no work. Almost all of the work is contracted. Um, the only thing that I did was I'm going to be doing the painting and I sanded down the existing vanity and painted that. But other than that, I'm just in the way. <laughs> and because we're moving the, the plumbing around, because the way that it was set up made it so tiny and bleh, in there. So um, I'm just in the way. So I just stay out of the way because it's not a very big space to work in. And it's actually faster if I just let Joe do it. So, um, so I'm not hardly doing anything in the bathroom. I did a lot. In, I did the bedrooms myself. I did the front entryway myself. The kitchen, I did probably 70% of the work, probably-ish, ish. ish. Um, A lot of it you need two people to do, so um, I couldn't do all of it myself, but when it comes to the bathroom and the ceiling and the roof, I'm not doing it. Um, The ceiling, actually, when when Joe ends up doing the ceiling, I'm leaving the house, so I'll be staying in a motel when the ceiling is getting done, and we don't have a date for that yet. So, um, me and the pups, uh, because there's a, there's another layer of blown in, it's a horrible layer. It's like, it's like not good, but there's a, there's a layer of rollout insulation, the two by fours, the ceiling, and then above the ceiling is like a loose insulation. So it's just, it's all going to come down into the living room and I don't want to be here for that or, Um, so I'm going to be gone for like two or three days with the dogs in a motel in town somewhere, or I, or we could just tent it in the backyard. That might work. We could sleep out in the kitchen. Maybe depends on the weather. Cause that'll save me like 200 bucks. I don't even know how much hotels and motels are anymore. Probably like a hundred dollars a night. If they're a hundred dollars a night, I'm just going to sleep in a tent in the backyard with the dogs. Or in the kitchen, he he can plastic it off at the at that. And you guys are also going to be very angry. These are coming down too. These uh, craftsman things, the pillars. I know that people are like, no, it makes it so cute and quaint. No, it doesn't. Um, what it does is it makes me bump into them every time I go into the kitchen, the bathroom, or my bedroom. And you have to curve around to get to the doorway in either direction. You can't see the doorway over here, I don't think. Is that the kitchen? 
That's the bedroom. It's backwards. It's backwards from what I'm looking at. But you you bump into them and they make the again, they all they do is take up space. They are not they are not they they don't hold anything up. So they're not whatever that word is that holds things up. A beam. It's not a cross beam. It, it's not a beam. So and and they don't add even though you think that they do they don't add value to the house they actually uh take up square footage so i'm losing about 5 square feet with these two pillars <clears throat> and joe said that he can put he can take out this gas thing and put in a wood stove and then on this wall is going to be a mini split it's it's all it's gonna be all changed. Everything is gonna change in here. Um, I'm probably gonna get rid of that couch because that was a uh, immediate need during the lockdowns when it was the only couch in stock, and I was grossly overcharged. And um, I hate the couch. <laughs> I don't like that couch. It's very uncomfortable, and uh, the rug's gonna get replaced. Like. Yeah, I'm going to paint the wood furniture. It's just, it's all going to be, um, it's all going to be redone in time because these things, these projects are expensive and I do live on a, a pretty tight budget. So um, each project I have to save up for several months to do because they're expensive. And then after we fin I finish, after we, I, I don't know. After the inside of the house is finished, then we start, I, we, I don't know if it's I or we, start working on the outside of the house. That is building fences, um, putting in a back deck and top shade thingy. It is taking a jackhammer to the cement out back because there's literally sidewalks in my backyard and parking spaces in my backyard, like for horses and carriages from 1915. There's no garage, but I have the space to build a garage. There was a garage there at some point. <laughs> it's just a whole bunch of stuff. It's a bunch of stuff. And it's slow. It's going to go so slow because it's so expensive. And the slower I go, the better deals I can get. And I'm not going to put more money into my house than the value of the house that I could sell it for. I think that that makes sense. So, so if I can make 60, if I have 60,000 in equity, which I do, <laughs> 60,000, so it's worth 60,000 more than what I paid for it. And um, I, if I, if that's the case, I'm not putting more than 30,000 into it. So that takes my 60,000 of equity and really turns it into 30. And that's what I'm going to, that's, I'm not spending more than 30. So there. And the, and the slower I go and the longer I take, the more bartering I can do. Yes, people barter. People still barter. Um, the plumber who moved and rearranged everything and installed everything in the bathroom, um, I traded an e-bike and he charged me a thousand bucks. So an e-bike and a thousand dollars is what it costs to um, re like just rearrange the plumbing under the house, like all of the plumbing in the bathroom. So the tub was here. Now it's there. The sink was there. Now it's here. And uh, the vanity and somebody just pulled up to my house and I don't know who that is. So there's that. And um, oh, it's the neighbor. And all that stuff. So it only cost me a thousand bucks. Plus an, an e-bike. Which didn't cost me anything. And then with my contractor slash friend Joe. Um, he's taking um, money off of the bill also for an e-bike. Because he's going to give the e-bike to his brother for Christmas. Because his brother can't get a driver's license. Because he has grandma seizures. Or seizures. Epilepsy. So he can't get a driver's license and he's never had one. And, but he, he's also sort of like stuck not being able to, to go anywhere, but the e-bikes really do give disabled people the opportunity 
to um, be more mobile. There's a lot of people outside. So he's buying the, uh, the wild way, the Uber delivery one that I did because his brother lives with his mother because his mother is a million years old and needs help. And then the disabled brother and all this other stuff. So now the disabled brother is going to be able to go to the grocery store by himself and, and use the, the, the insulated basket on the back to carry the groceries. And I'm happy for him. Good for him. I'm glad that it's going to a good, a good home. And I'm glad that I'm getting the discount on the services. So yeah, people do barter. If only I could barter somebody for a new roof. <laughs> Folks, if you decide to get solar, this, I bought this house and it had solar. I didn't put it on. I didn't have anything to do with that. It just came with it. $30,000 worth of solar. This house came with it. And it was put on a roof that is a bazillion years old. The man who lived here before me was in his 90s. Not from what I understand, from what my neighbors tell me, he would, did, was not in the greatest mental health when he left. Um, so I think that the solar company came in and he couldn't afford a new roof. So they just went in there and just put it on an existing roof that was already concaving. And then they put some weird apparatus in the attic to keep the roof from completely collapsing in. And the roof is so old that my insurance company is going to drop me if I don't have a new roof installed by a certain date. But I can't find someone to take the solar off and put it back on. And you're like, just call the solar company that put it in. Number one, I don't know who. No, I'm just kidding. I know who put it in. They don't exist anymore. The solar company is gone. They're out of business. It was put in seven, eight years ago. They're no longer in business, so I can't just call them. And then you're probably like, just call another solar company. They won't touch it. Call a roofing company that works with solar. There are none. They won't touch it. So if you decide to get solar, please put on a brand spanking new roof before you put on the solar. And solar lasts 30 years, put on a 30-year roof, trust me, because you're not going to be able to find anybody to do it. And if they do, it's like going to be months out and it's super expensive. So that is a challenge. I challenge you to that. Man, this is like a 40-minute video. I hope you guys enjoy me talking about crazy nothingness. I'm going to make a video here pretty soon about... Um, I've made videos on it before about uh, extreme frugality, which to me is not extreme, but other people consider me extreme. And it's just basically going to be me talking about how I have everything that other people have just different. So you have a, a BMW. Well, I have a, and it runs perfectly great. You have a $700 a month payment. Well, I have a 25 year old car that runs perfect, still has less than 95,000 miles on it. No problem. My my insurance is cheaper. My registration is cheaper. And I use my e-bike, so I hardly spend any money in gas. I do all my own maintenance. You know, you have a big fancy, you know, $700,000 house. Well, I have a big fancy house. Oh, that was the thing. So the person said, you have a big fancy house. And I went all off about the all the improvements that I'm doing on the house. However, here's the thing. I was like, so... Do people who live in poverty, like, are they supposed to have, like, poop, like, smeared across their walls or something? Because I don't understand. They're like, your big fancy house. It's a thousand square feet <laughs> with no garage. It's a thousand square feet with no garage, okay? I live in a town of 7,000, 8,132 people. whoop D, you know? Um, and... So my big fancy house with all my fancy furniture that I got like at in it from like they were inherited to me or uh, sanded and painted down or like pieced together with like weathered furniture that people had in their backyard. Yeah, it's super fancy. Now, here's the thing. OK, this is interesting. How do I put this? 
Okay, so yes, I was poor growing up. I was. Single mom, dad not in the picture, not paying child support. My mom filled vending machines for a living. And we lived in an expensive part of the country. So <clears throat> you can imagine how how little we had. But my mother was the black sheep of the family. The rest of my family is very well off. I wonder if I'm the black sheep now. I bet I am. They would never tell me even if I was. But here's the deal. My grandparents, my aunt, my uncles, on my mom's side, not on my dad's side. My dad's side is, <clears throat> my dad's side is also poor. In, they live in Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. And um, they many of them are struggling financially. But on my mom's side, uh, wealthy, right? So you go into their houses, and their houses are very similar to mine. I, I mean, they're way richer than I am, like way more wealthy than I am. But you have to think about how, even when you look at house tours of like, I don't know, um, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, whatever, look at their house. They have furniture, right? So they've got like a TV and a fireplace. They've got a couch. But what you're not going to see is knickknacks everywhere. You don't see, um, I can't even, like just knickknacks. Like you don't see stuff all over their house. And you're, and then a lot of people are like, it's because they're working so much. They're so busy. No, it's because they don't need stuff. And I, I, and it's the same with my family. So you go into their house. Yeah. They've got a couch. They've got a kitchen table. Um, they've got chairs. They've got a TV, but there's not a lot of stuff all over the place. Like something that's not practical. Tchotchkes. Is that the word? tchotchkes, knickknacks, stuff, stuff, right? And I used to have a lot of stuff, but the stuff I had, I inherited. When my mom passed away, I got the house and everything in it. And my mom was an eBayer and it was four, four bedroom houses worth of stuff in one house. That's not four bedrooms. I'm talking about four, four bedroom houses. So that's 16 rooms worth of furniture and stuff. And then I moved to Arizona into a tiny, not tiny house, a little house, 900 square feet. And um, I just found that I was much more calm, much more peaceful, much easier to have less stuff. And it's not just about moving. It's just like I never wanted this stuff to begin with. So when I moved here, I got rid of even more. And it's just once you start getting rid of stuff, it's so easy to get rid of things. It is so much easier. And when my house is clean, which it's not right now, because, you know, I've got flooring across here. You can't see it, but behind both these pillars is just tables full of dust, not even dust, walls <laughs> and tools. And the dust is all over the place. You can't see it. But I don't have stuff. The only stuff I have is in, in this cabinet. And the only stuff in there is mostly just pictures in frames. Pictures in frames. I've got a couple of candles. I've got my dog's ashes. Nothing of any monetary value. It's not worth anything. I just don't like stuff. And it's something that you'll notice. There's this guy that I watch on YouTube sometimes. He's like an eviction guy. He goes and evicts people. Like he kicks them out of their house and he goes immediately into the house, starts taking pictures and they are evicted. They are trespassing once he shows up. I think he's a cop. I'm not sure. But you go into these people's houses who are not able to pay rent <clears throat> and their houses are filled to the brim with stuff. I'm talking like junk. But it is junk that they could have sold to pay rent. So you got to put yourself, you got to put that into perspective. Do you want stuff or do you want money? The reason I choose money is not out of greed or selfishness. It's because it's freedom to me. Not, having less stuff is freedom because you're not dusting it. You're not caring for it. You know, stuff that you just have to you have to take care of stuff. You have to dust it. You have to clean it. You have to store it. With money, 
the thing about money is that when you save money, you make money off of your money. That is a capitalist society. So if I have stuff, my stuff doesn't multiply. And if it did multiply, I would run out of space. But money multiplies. And money is freedom. So the more money I have, the more freedom I have. And the more freedom I have. And that's not just freedom in um, choosing what job I want. Or if I want a job at all. It's not, it's not even about... Um, what kind of car I want to drive, or what kind of house I want to live in. It's simply about earning enough money to where I can pay my life expenses so I can, I can pay to live. Like I, I can, so I want my money to expand to the point where I never have to worry about how much I spend on groceries. That'll ne- I mean, I don't worry about what I spend on groceries. I just... I just buy certain things that cost a certain amount and it always turns out to be the same every month. (laughs) But um, to where you don't have to worry, am I going to pay the, am I going to be able to pay the gas bill or the electric bill this month? Which is it? You know, so it gives you freedom of clutter in your mind, not just clutter in your house, but clutter in your mind. Okay, how am I going to pay the auto bill? Um, When are property taxes due? Um, I don't know if I can register the car this year. I just don't have the $200 or blah, blah, blah. So it allows you the freedom not to worry about that. And then once you stop worrying about having enough, and I'm not talking about having enough money to buy stuff. I'm like having enough money to live, not just survive, live. To me, I think that you're upper middle class when you go to the grocery store and you don't have to worry about how much you spend. Thank God. You know, if you get to that point, thank God for for that for reaching that level of, of success that you don't have to worry about what's in your grocery cart and how you're going to pay for it. And not a lot of people are in that position. But then they go out to eat. Anyway, that's another story. So freedom. So I would rather have less stuff and more freedom. Because you do have to buy your freedom. Freedom is not free. Somebody's paying for it, whether that be with money or blood, sweat, and tears. I'm going to stop this video now because I've been talking for a really long time. I apologize. But trying to get you all to think differently about money money is freedom. And I choose freedom over anything else. All right, once again, my book living on almost nothing, the link is down in the description box below. And if you guys do decide to do these those fun activities with your family, don't hesitate to send me send me a link to the video because I, I would watch it. I think that that would be fun. All right, folks, do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.